Now boarding all passengers to the basis.net. How's it going, everybody? You know, uh, I need to give me a quick second. Hey, Isaac and Ben, how's it going, man? Uh, guys, give me just one quick second. I'm getting some uh, popping out of my bass, which means, actually, you know what? This is probably a great opportunity to show you how to fix that. So first of all, welcome. <laughs> Do me a favor. Tell me where you're from, and, uh, and I'll shout you out in a little bit. Um, but let's see, is it this camera angle right here? Yeah. All right, so check this out. Um, I was getting some popping and clicking because my, whoops, where's my bass? There we go. Uh, this input jack is loose. Uh, to give you an idea, what the heck did I do with that cable? Hold on, hold on. Um, this is what it, the sound that I'm getting. Right. The, the, the input jack is just a little bit loose. And so it's kind of creating those pops and clicks. So a lot of us are quite often, I keep forgetting it. Uh, quite often we're kind of tempted to just grab this and start twisting it. Um, but the problem is, is if you do that, those wires underneath the pit guard are also connected. And so as you twist that top knob, you're also twisting the wires underneath and it can create a much bigger problem. So um, just take the screws off of your pit guard and then hold your input jack in place while you twist this guy up here, right? So that way we are making sure that we're not uh, jacking things up underneath. And if I plug it back in, let's take a listen, hold on. Did I fix the problem? No, not yet. <laughs> a little tighter, or actually maybe it's going this way. Hold on. Sorry, it's bugging me and I don't want to cut and out while I'm playing today. Much better, okay. So now that we got that settled, hey, welcome, <laughs> do me a favor. Tell me where you're from. And I'm going to shout you out here in just a minute, but I got to put these screws back in. Um, hey, thanks for uh, hanging out with me on a, a Thursday. Well, it's afternoon where I'm at. I'm not sure where you guys are, but I'm experimenting with some, uh, you know, different days to do these live streams and uh, different times. Um, I know a lot of you are in Europe and, and uh, other time zones where, you know, I'll do it at like three or four in the afternoon but the rest of you are like asleep <laughs> or you know, just getting ready to go to bed. So um, I'm experimenting with doing these at uh, yeah, different times just to make sure that everybody, everybody gets to participate. All right, so let's see, who do we got here? Still from sunny Des Moines. Hey, is it really sunny over there, Ben? I don't, I don't think so. Isaac throws me three bases, love it. Um, Scott says, hi from Glasgow. Notice I didn't say Glasgow. I'm actually, I'm like 20%, maybe 25% Scottish uh, on my dad's side. Uh, the the Lewises and the, and the Wallaces. I've never been to Scotland though, one of these days. Uh, who else we got? Isaac coming from El Paso. Greetings from Cape Town. Hi, Tim. Uh, Bav Bavaria, Germany. All right. Christoph. Um, what's, uh, hold on, hold on. This is Henry. What's a brother? I'm a bass playing Philly police officer sitting in a traffic post and watching. Well, hey, man, I'm glad that I can uh, entertain you. I'm glad I can be of service to someone like yourself. And thank you for your service. I appreciate that. Um, hi from Nigeria. Whoa, I don't think I've had someone tune in from there before. Uh, northwest of Ireland. Also a little bit Irish. Uh, back when I had hair, it was red. So that's probably where it comes from. Hi from Belgium. Uh, nice to finally have a live stream in a manageable hour. Nathan, uh, Nathan, you're very welcome. And anyone who's tuning in from somewhere that's not Los Angeles, which I'm assuming is most of you, um, feel free to you know leave me a comment or shoot me a message and be like, hey, this would be the ideal day or this would be the ideal time because I really, really do want to make sure everyone, um, everyone gets to hang, everyone gets to participate. Hi from Italy. Nice to have you. Can you guys all hear the bass okay? Is that coming through? Playing a P bass with flats. This is actually a Fender Precision uh, made in Mexico. I don't know, I got this a few years ago and I hate this, but I love it. It looks so cool, so I can't take it off, but it totally gets in the way of my technique because if I want to lay my palm and do palm muting, I can't. And, uh, you know, for some reason, playing on this side or on this side, 
I, I want I want my hand right here where the pickup cover is, but uh, this is kind of like my Jamerson base, you know? And so I've, I've got to leave it on there, otherwise it's it's not a Jamerson base. Coming through, great. Um, what kind of pickups? These, you can't see them. Yeah, because of the pickup cover. Uh, these are Aguilar uh, uh, AG60P. Um, so these are the, uh, they're 1960s iteration of, of a precision pickup. I also have, it's not in here. Oh, my dad's borrowing it at the moment. I've got another um, precision base with, with their hot P pickup in it. It's also pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, dude, you know, hold on. Give me one second. I forgot. There's something that I'm supposed to have pulled up here. There's a song that I'm going to play and I don't have it. So hold on. Give me, give me just one second to find it. Um, where is it? Is it you? Is it you? No, it's this one. Yeah. So the reason why I'm playing this bass today, cause I just love the sound of a P bass playing, uh, I mean with flats playing like really old school music and that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing today. So, Hey, do me a favor guys. Um, if you don't follow me on social media yet, there's my handles for Instagram and Twitter. Facebook, unfortunately, is different. That's Jamie Lewis base. Someone already got the, uh, the Jamie Lewis. How dare they? I always forget with this base too, because it's got reverse tuners. <laughs> so I'll go to tighten it and then it'll actually start loosening it. That's no fun. One more note, hold on, hold on. Are we good? We're close enough for rock and roll, dude. Uh, well, hey, so I've got some really cool things coming up. Uh, let's see, it's the end of May. In a couple of weeks, I'm heading to Germany. Uh, I'm going to this event called Toman Gearhead U University, TGU. Um, and it's very similar to what I did last year when I went to uh, another event in Germany called GitCon. So it's gonna be a bunch of YouTubers, a bunch of artists, and we're hanging out at, um, at Toman. They're like the Sweetwater or Guitar Center. Of, of Europe. A lot of us Americans, we don't know what, what Tomon is. And I might even be saying it wrong, so I apologize for that. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we're just going to be making a bunch of music, making a bunch of videos and hanging. I'll be podcasting pretty much nonstop. So um, that's something that's coming up. And then also July 6th, if you're in the States, we're playing uh, an event called Summerfest in Milwaukee. Uh, and the lineup is ridiculous. Some of the headliners are, I'm, I'm just reading off the website, Snoop, Snoop Dogg, uh, Willie Nelson, The Killers, Megadeth, Zach Brown Band, Bon Iver. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I think everyone says that name wrong. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's a really, really cool event that we're going to be playing uh, with Shim on July 6th. I'm not exactly sure what time we play, uh, but head over to like summerfest.com or just take a look at it if you're in the Wisconsin area. And hey, if you wouldn't mind doing me a quick favor, please give this video a thumbs up, hit that like button. It just helps us out with our rankings so that more people will get notified every single time. Uh, that I go live. And also, I just want to say a really quick thank you to the folks at Enkey. These guys make a rad, rad case um, called the AMG2. So, I mean, I was looking behind me. It used to be over there. But it's uh, it, it's a bass case, you know, that stands up on its own. It's about that wide. You can fit two instruments inside of it. It's a, it's a flight case, so everything inside is all covered in foam. And it weighs less than 50 pounds when you put two instruments in it. So I've been touring with it for about a year and a half now. It's so freaking awesome. So go check them out at nkeyusa.com and uh, be sure to tell them that, that Jamie sent you. So, hey, let's just do this. Let's, uh, while everyone's still coming in, uh, I'm just gonna play some music for you. I hope you don't mind. If you got headphones, I recommend you put them on because it'll sound better. But if you, all you got is your, your iPhone speakers or whatever, then that'll have to do. Uh, this is a song by a gal. <laughs> This is one of my favorite songs in the world. This is a record that I played on maybe like two years ago, a year and a half or something like that. Her name's Kelly Ann Keo. Um, and it's a, uh, this record is like my heart and soul. It's, it's, it's like a Stax Motown kind of sound. Um, the whole entire record is absolutely fantastic. I'll talk a little bit about it after I'm done playing. But uh, here we go. This song is called Memphis.
My goodness, you guys have no idea. That is seriously like one of my favorite songs of all time uh, that I've ever gotten to play on. <laughs> I'm sweating a little bit. Oh, I gotta put my bass down. Seriously, so uh, the story behind like that whole recording, I got a phone call uh, from this guy uh, by the name of Ross. He produced this album by Kelly and Keo. And you know, it's it starts out like a normal conversation. Like, hey, you know, I got referred to you by so-and-so and you know, can we do this record together? And so all of a sudden I'm thinking like, yeah, okay. How much? When is it? How, you know, how can I make it work? And then he goes, it's kind of like a Stax record, Motown, kind of like really, really old school sound. And immediately I'm like, okay, clear my schedule, uh, hold my appointments, hold my calls. Just tell me when and I'll be there because I, I love this kind of music. This is, uh, um, you can't tell. I mean, I have so much fun playing it. So this morning, usually when I do these live streams, I come in here um, and as you've seen, there's a, you know, there's a lot of things popping up and stuff and whatnot. So I come and I, I make sure it's all programmed correctly. Um, and then just run through the song. If I'm going to play one just once or twice to make sure that the levels are good and everything. And I played this song for like an hour and a half <laughs> this morning, all the way through. Cause I just, I love playing it so much. So anyways, uh, check this out. It's on Spotify. If you type in Kelly and Keo, the EP is called the real thing. Um, I think there's like five or six tunes on it. I played on all of them. Uh, Keenan McBurney plays drums. Uh, you've seen him here at my channel as well. A good friend of mine, Will Pierce, plays guitar. Uh, Ian Vo, uh, saxophone, and, and he did he did all the horn arrangements. Just everyone on it is is freaking slamming. All great players. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's read some more of these uh, shout outs here. Oh man, hold on. I, I, I missed a few. Okay, let me go back. Where is... Uh... I don't have the uh, chat pulled up on my computer for some reason. That's okay. Can I? Hmm. Sorry. Give me one second. The uh, I can't see your your previous posts. Well, I'm just going to say never mind. Hold on. I hope I don't lose you all. Is everyone still here? I'm refreshing my uh, my live stream, and it looks like everyone's still here. Okay, good. Let's let's go back up to the top. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, as far as these questions, um, give me just one second. I'm going to come back to them. So I see your dream base. I'll, I'll get back to you, Scott. Let me just uh, check this out, see if anyone has anything about uh, the music I just played. Uh, Evan, good to have you, man. Um, Evan is a member at thebassist.net. Super awesome to see you. Love the music, man, special. Oh, dude, thank you so much, man. Uh, that's, a, that's a fantastic instrument. Tall Guy 32 uh, good to catch a broadcast. I usually don't. Well, it's good to have you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, love the 60s tone. Thank you so very much. That's, uh, for me, precision with flats. That's that's the end of it. Isaac, thank you so very much. Uh, is it not Memphis by DL03? Sorry, Victor, I don't, I don't know what that means. Super greasy GHS strings. These happen to be precision flats. These are GHS uh, flatmon strings, which are my, hands down, my favorite flatmon string. You guys are awesome. Um, <laughs> give me just one second. Rajesh, hello from India. Thanks for joining me, man. Jasper from Belgium. Our second from Belgium, I think. Uh, Evan wants to know, how'd the house hunting in Vegas go? Pretty good. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, okay, Lawrence, uh, I checked out the album after she was on the podcast. Serious music and your tone and ideas were fantastic. Dude, thank you so very much. Yeah, I actually, I had Kelly on, Kellyanne on the Bassist podcast. Um, geez, she was like one of the first episodes, episode three or four or something like that. So yeah, we talked about it a little bit. I plugged the album there as well. Um, speaking of which, hey, go check out The Bassist Podcast if you haven't yet. If you're into podcasts, just open up your phone, open up a podcasting app and type in this word right here, The Bassist Podcast. We're on episode like number 57 right now. Um, and actually we had some really awesome guests the past couple of weeks. Last week, Episode 57 is with, with Robert Bubby Lewis. You know him from the work he's done with Snoop, Dre, and Stevie Wonder, and so many people, it's not even funny. Um, also did one a couple weeks ago with my friend Aaron Kellum, 
And uh, someone new that I haven't met before, Titus Macon Jr. Titus plays, ah, shoot, I can't remember the name of his character, but he's on an ABC show called The Rookie. I want to say it's on like Monday at nine or something like that. Uh, but they just got renewed for season two. So uh, Titus is the first actor that I've ever had on, on, on the podcast. Um, and then also, if you guys haven't seen this before, uh, check this out. This is a video that just went live, uh, I think last week or the week before. I just did a, a review of the Music Man Stingray special. I wish I still had it here at my studio, but I had to give it back already. But it's a super rad bass, so um, if you guys are interested, go go check that out. That's what's been happening. So um, let's get into some questions. Um, anything you guys have for me, just go ahead and type it in, and I will get to them in order. So let's come back to the beginning, not the beginning, somewhere up here at the top. Scott said, what's your dream bass? And you know what? I have it, but it's not next to me. And I'm connected to a bunch of wires, so I can't get up and go. But um, my signature bass is a Torillo five-string tenor. It's tuned up E through C. It's a 33-inch scale, so it's one inch shorter. And the uh, string spacing is 16 millimeter instead of uh, standard 19. So for anything solo or jazz or... Uh, I don't know. That's like that's my go-to instrument. It, it feels fantastic. If I'm not playing that and I'm doing something more like rock or pop, uh, then it's a J bass. And if it's old school, it's got to be a P bass with flats. <laughs> so I guess I have three dream instruments. Um, sorry, that was a lengthy answer. All right, let's keep going down here. Um, uh, I was talking about... Oh, okay, hold on. So Victor says, I was talking about Delvin Lamar organ trio. They have a track called Memphis. Oh, nice. I haven't heard it, but I'm, I'm sure it's fantastic. Um, Dr. Chud says, I really wanted a multi-scale bass. I have to reconsider the piece. By multi-scale, are you talking about the ones that are like fan fret? I guess they fan out this way. I actually don't even know. Uh, like like the ding wall basses where like uh, the, the B string or the F sharp, <laughs> you got like a seven string, uh, is, is like longer scale than, than the smaller ones. Um, I haven't played any of those before. They sound great. Um, my friend Adam Neely, if you guys watch some some YouTube bass players, you might know who he is. He has a ding wall, and I was asking him about it, and he said the only thing he doesn't like is when he goes to play chords. I just picked up my water cup. I can't do it. Um, he said he doesn't like the multi-scale instruments. I'm not trying to talk you out of it. Uh, this is the only thing I've heard. Hold on, is it this angle? Yeah. So the, what he said is like, when you're up high and you're trying to play like like a chord like this, like the way that my index finger is kind of catching, I'm catching both of these notes here with one finger. And he said on the multi-scale instruments or the fan frets, he's like, you have to kind of do this or, or the opposite, I guess. I mean, I guess it just depends on what direction it's moving. Um, but yeah, it can get kind of wacky if you're, if you're holding down chords because the frets aren't perfectly in line with each other. So I don't know if that's something you've ever thought of. Uh, Manny Bass says, hi there, fellow bass teacher. Hello, Manny, nice to meet you. Um, about to reach 100,000 subscribers. Would love to collaborate with you. Dude, Manny, um, shoot me a message. Yeah, let's chat, it'd be awesome. And congrats on 100,000 subscribers. That's super awesome, dude. Or, I don't know, yes, you're a dude. <laughs> I didn't want to make that assumption. Uh, Bubby Lewis, yes. Bass players and I'm is so excited to hear that one. Honestly, it was a... I've been saying this a lot. Like every time I do a podcast, I'm like, that was the best one ever. And then every time I, then the next podcast, I'm like, that was like the best one ever. So at the moment, uh, that podcast with Bubby is is the best one I've done. Um, we just, we had a lot in common. We really uh, ha had a good time, had a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to some future podcasts. Next week, I'm meeting up with Brian Beller from the Aristocrats, from Death Clock, like one of my favorite cartoon bands. No, they're just like one of my favorite bands in general. They happen to be a cartoon, but Brian pl uh, played on that. And he's done a whole bunch of other work with like Steve I and uh, Satriani and a bunch of shredding guitar players. Um, who else? I got Oscar Kurtaya coming up, Billy Sheehan. We're still working out the schedule on that one. So yeah, it's gonna be some killer guests coming on the podcast pretty soon. Um, Nathan wants to know, do you ever play fretless? I have two of them. No. I guess technically, yeah. Okay, so I've got a fretless five string. Uh, it's a Carvin Icon bass with uh, with nylon strings on it. Uh, I have a fretless jazz bass with flat wounds and uh, and, I, and and an upright bass, which obviously has no frets on it. And the short answer is no. <laughs> like I, I use it when the song calls for it. And in fact, yesterday I did a session where I played a fretless. 
but typically I don't grab it. It's not, um, I don't do like that kind of music very often. But yeah, when, it, when the song calls for it, I do, but I definitely need to uh, work on my, my intonation like bef before. Uh, if the session is on Saturday, on Friday, I'm just shedding <laughs> the fretless bass to make sure I've still got my chops on it because none of them have lines on it, um, except the jazz bass. Now the jazz does have the lines drawn in, uh, but the, the icon and uh, obviously the upright, no fret markers, so you're on your own. Uh, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, funky, di funky Diggo? Funky Diggo, I like it. Uh, I love my Ken Smith burner. I have a J and a PJ too. You know, I used to have a PJ bass. I used to own a Fodera and it was a, 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 a PJ and I uh, sold it maybe 10 years ago and I haven't replaced the, the, the PJ sound. For me, and the reason why is because I either want a precision bass or I want a jazz bass, but I really don't want them together. Because again, like I said, if it's old school, it's this. If it's rock and pop, it's the J bass, you know? And there's nothing where it's like, oh, it's like old school rock pop. Like I just, I, I don't ever blend those genres or, you know, those sounds together. So I have everything <laughs> like categorized in my brain for what it looks like. And also the feel, because here's the thing. If you got a PJ bass, what kind of neck do you have on it? Do you have a, a J neck? Do you have a P neck? And then what year of, of, of those iterations, you know? So I just like, I like to have an instrument that feels a certain way and sounds a certain way. And I just use it for songs that feel and sound like that. And then, you know, that's just how I do it. I'm not knocking the PJ bass. That's just why I haven't replaced it. Um, Rajesh, which basses do I like in gospel music and why? Um, well, I can tell you that I love the sound of gospel music and a lot of the players happen to play an MTD. Andrew Goucher is one of them. I think he plays MTD. Bubby Lewis, also an MTD player. So um, it's uh, got, you know, a very scooped mid, a huge bottom end, lots of top end. Uh, I don't do a lot of gospel, uh, but when I do, um, I use this bass. This is my, uh, <laughs> one of my first signature basses. This is an M bass, uh, MEJ5, 35 inch scale. Okay, I'm a short dude. I'm like 5'7", and I mean, look at that. I can't even, <laughs> I can't even fan out my fingers, just barely on the lowest four frets. So this is a huge instrument. Um, so this is like my pocket bass. Um, if I just have to like hold down, you know, groove, not that that's what gospel is anyways. I keep picking up my tea mug and not drinking anything. So give me a second, I'm gonna take a sip. And I'm sorry if I made any slurping sounds just now. No, it's like right next to my microphone. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you didn't say which bass, you said which bassist. I totally screwed that up. Um, <laughs> any of them really. I mean, if, you, if, you're, if you're hanging in a, in a gospel chops kind of band, then you deserve to be there <laughs> and you're and you're a killer player but i would have to say andrew goucher you know he's probably my go-to uh henry what's up dude um i have an old oh sorry i have an olp and i'm trying to find what's the best way or the best pickup i can use to sound closest to an actual music man look no further oh whoops than this bass right here uh this is a, a stingray that i got at a pawn shop so i know nothing about it hold on Fan plug, uh, let's go. Sorry, this cable's got a mute on it, so I'll turn that off. Okay, hold on, wait, wait. The output might be really hot on this, so watch your ears if you're wearing headphones. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, so this right here is an Aguilar pickup, and I've got an Aguilar two-band uh, EQ in it as well. Um, and so, dude, I love Aguilar's take on, on the Music Man sound, because it's typically a little bit too sharp. But the top end... It's just perfect. So for me, uh, this pickup right here, the Aguilar uh, Music Man, I have no idea what the model number is. They only make one of them. Ah. So like you can hear there's top end, but it's not harsh, which has kind of always been my problem with the Music Man sound. Um, and then the bottom end. I 
know I was just clipping like crazy in there. Uh, but so, dude, that's what I would recommend. This is a great pickup. Probably not that expensive, and it'll definitely fit in your um, your OLP. So, anyways, love that bass. Um, what else we got here? Chris says, what do you do when you've been playing the same 40 to 50 songs at church for several years and it's getting old? How do you keep growing? Okay, I've actually got a great exercise for you. Might as well just keep using the space here. Um, this is something I learned from Steve Bailey. Okay, sorry. So this is something I learned uh, from Steve Bailey from years of playing gigs where he would say the same thing. It's like, man, the, like the 50, oh, sorry, not the 50th, like the 100,000th time that you played Sweet Home Alabama. It's like, he just, you, there you are. He's like, I just can't stand playing that song over and over and over again. So he's like, so here's what I would do to kind of make it fun. All right, I'll, I'll go back to this angle right here. And he said that like, the way you would usually play that song is like this. Like you could play the whole entire song without going anywhere. So I'm using my pinky on the D. I'm using my index finger on the C because that's where it is. And then same thing, hitting my index finger again on the G. And so he was like, I would do something that just made no sense whatsoever. I would play the D here with my index finger. And then I would play the C with my pinky. And then I would play the G back with my index finger. Right, so just doing like really irrational shifts. So like right there, Instead of doing the slide with just one finger, like try to, I did my pinky and then slid into my, my index finger. Ah, sorry. Uh, I'm not doing a very good job of explaining it. Or sorry, I'm demonstrating it, but the explanation is there. So just give yourself shifts that make absolutely no sense. And then the goal, okay, that's, you don't stop there. You do shifts that don't make sense but you have to make it sound just exactly the same as if you were playing it with the with the easy version, with the right way of playing it, I guess, right? So like take something that's easy and then make it hard by just like handicapping yourself, but you play it with one hand or, you know, blindfolded or something like that. And so that was something he said he would do when he was playing gigs that were just boring, where you'd done the music over and over and over again. He would just try to come up with these shifts that don't make sense and then make sure that it still sounds good and not like all oh, the bass players <laughs> trying something new and it's really not working, you know? Um, I don't know if that helps, but uh, I've done that on almost every cover band gig and I love it. It's a lot of fun. So give it a try with the songs that you can't stand. Uh, Christoph, Christoph says, uh, do you have a good tip to deal with the different length uh, of index and middle finger with the plucking hand? Okay, so obviously he's saying that you know, like these two fingers aren't the the same size, right? One's longer than the other. So um, when you say how to deal, are you asking like, I mean, like th there's only maybe half an inch between my two fingers. So I don't really have an issue going between these two fingers. Um, but maybe, you, maybe you've got a finger that's way longer than mine. So I don't know, tell, tell me what you mean by how do you deal? And we'll, we'll come back to that question. Uh, Nathan says, I love jazz basses, but most annoying thing I find about them is the curved back. So you can't put it straight on a normal stand. I haven't experienced that before, but uh, normally I use like these kind of stands where, where it like leans up, uh, you know, it's like a three banger. It's got like three, three guitars on it. Um, <laughs> ben wants to know where the unicorn mug is. It's actually downstairs because this is green tea. I drink green tea out of my Yellowstone mug. See, it's got the wolf on it and I drink coffee out of the unicorn mug. If you didn't see my Instagram story this morning, you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but that's what that was. Uh, Justin, do you feel that as we get older and past our prime, we lose technique or speed or dexterity like professional athletes do? And what can we do to prevent this? Justin, that's, that's a heavy one. And to be honest, I was literally thinking that like two days ago, because I've noticed I'm not as good as I was year, a few years ago. <laughs> uh, 
the exact things you're talking about. My my speed isn't as fast. Um, I don't know. I, I, I can just tell I've been doing this for a while, and um, I, it's not as easy for me as it, as it used to be. And I don't know that it's my age. I mean, that, that definitely crossed my mind. The first thing is like, well, it couldn't possibly be me. It must be something that uh, you know happens to everybody. Um, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. Um, I, I, I couldn't tell you for sure. I will tell you that there's a lot of players that are older than me, and they can play way faster and way smoother uh, than I can. So I don't know that the age has anything to do with it. Um, I will say that time does, though, for sure. As we get older, we have less time to do the things that we like to do because we got a mortgage and we got to keep the lights on <laughs> and now we got five or six mouths to feed you know what i mean like I, so the time that i used to spend practicing bass was 10 or 12 hours a day and now i'm lucky if i get 10 or 12 minutes <laughs> you know just because of all the responsibilities i have so i don't know that necessarily the age um you know makes makes us play worse but it definitely cuts into our time so I don't know how to ask how to answer that question, but that's interesting. I was literally thinking the same exact thing. Um, so, anyways, hope that helps. Uh, good volume on that one. Hey, that was me. Uh, damn, that bass sounds great. If you're talking about the uh, the stingray, yeah, yeah, it definitely does. It's um, it's one of my favorites. Like I said, I just picked it up in a pawn shop and and put the um, the Aguilar pickup and preamp in it. Sounds awesome. Uh, Justin says, I'm 45 and can't get faster. 30 years of playing. Well, I'll say this. Um, speed is in everything, and I don't know that it's guaranteed. Again, I'm not a doctor, and so I don't know how physiology and all that plays into this. But like, there's a difference between slow twitch muscles and fast twitch muscles. Um, and like a piano player is really, really relying on those fast twitch muscles to get your fingers, you know, really, really quick. Whereas like, like, like there's a difference between a sprinter and a marathon runner, right? Or a running back and a line back. So like, I don't know that speed is something that we can all get to, you know? Um, we can hit drills and we can do them over and over and over again and increase our speed. But like, are we ever gonna get to like, oh, I just wanna play as fast as Billy Sheehan. I don't know if you're gonna <laughs> really don't know if you can because he's logged in so many hours from when he was a lot younger not saying he's old now but you know he was clocking in those hours in his teens and in his 20s and it's different when you're clocking in those hours in your 40s and in your 50s right like neurologically your brain is just in a different place so um if speed is something that you're worried about i don't know that it's uh i don't know that it's really that big of a deal uh, simply because, I mean, on a bass guitar, I mean, of course, depending on the genre of music you're playing, but like 99% of the time, you don't need to play faster than eighth notes or 16th notes at a, at a pretty slow tempo. I'm getting a phone call right now. I'm just going to ignore it. Um, but, but yeah, if speed is an issue, um, you know, hit drills, do things like this. Um, I'll, uh, hold on, let me pop on a... Oh, wait, you know what? I think I can do a metronome here. Hold on. Let me see if I pop on a click, will it start playing? Are you getting a click? Whoops. No, I'm not hearing a metronome right now. You guys might be, sorry. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, all right, so if you guys hear the click right now, here's what I would do. Oh, whoops, shoot. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna slow that down a little bit. 80 BPM. All right, I hope you guys can still hear this. So check this out. Um.
Okay, so hopefully you guys were hearing the click um, against the bass there. But so what I did is I just set a slow tempo. That was 80. And honestly, I probably should have done it slower. I probably should have done like 70 or 60. And uh, I started by playing eighth notes. Bum, 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 bum. And then I went to triplets, but the click didn't change. It just went bum, 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 bum. And then I went to 16th notes. Bum, 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 bum. And basically, I just took this tempo and I'm subdividing it into two and then three and then four and then five. I stopped at six tuplets, but I could have kept going to set tuplets and then eventually 30 second notes. And so I call that like, um, this is an exercise that I usually assign to my students. Uh, I call it the, uh, the, the pyramid, it's the rhythm pyramid, right? So we're like stacking up each time, two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, then eight, and then we come back down, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And I'll just go up and come down, up and up and down. And it's kind of like hitting a treadmill and just running hills. Right, we're never like running just one straight hill all the way up. Right, you get to go up, and then you get to come down, and you get to rest, and then you get to go up again. Or if you're actually running hills, um, so so I kind of do the same thing with my bass plan. I'll just pop on a metronome, I'll kick on Netflix, and I'm just sitting there watching TV. I'm distracted by brain, and my hand is just playing, going between all those different rhythms. So you're working your clock, you're working on your rhythms, right? Uh, by by doing this, but you're also uh, I'm singling out the, the right hand. If you notice, my left hand was just playing a single note. Because if you're having trouble with speed, I can almost guarantee you it's your right hand's fault. Or at least that's what I've found for me. So I'll just work on my right hand and just kind of over and over and over again hit that drill. And it might take months. It might take months before you notice a difference. But that's kind of how this works, right? I don't go to the gym and lift a bunch of weights and then look at myself in the mirror the next morning and go, it didn't work. I'm not doing this anymore. Right? It's like five weeks later, six weeks later, I, I catches me catches me by surprise. I'll look in the mirror and be like, whoa, wow, he's got a chest now. He's got I don't even know what these are called, but I've got him now. You know, like it takes a long time. So um, a good idea, and I'm spending a lot of time on this question, but a good idea would be to record yourself on day one, doing that exercise that I just showed you. And then uh, two weeks later, record yourself, do it again. And just one time, don't go back and two passes and overdub. Like That's not the point. The point is just capture how good am I at this now and then work on it every day for 30 minutes. Watch a TV show, 22 minutes or <laughs> whatever it is, right? Do that every single day and then two weeks later, record yourself again. Two weeks later, record yourself again and then like compare day, day one to day 30 to day 60, right? I guarantee you're going to notice a difference in speed. Sorry, I spent a lot of time on that question, but uh, I think it's a great idea. Uh, let's keep going down here. Unicorn mug, yep, 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 got past that. Um, oh, this one's good. Uh, Rocco Prestia hasn't been past his prime age slash physical for a while and hasn't lost anything. I, I can definitely contest to that, <laughs> definitely. Um, Jasper says, I'm too young. Yes, uh, yeah, that question probably was not intended for someone my age, but yes, I, I do understand. Uh, Justin, you're very welcome. Jasper says, uh, we have a, a limited speed we can reach. Uh, degeneration would probably start at 65. Not exercising enough might get you out of shape. And you know what, Jasper? I, I'm glad that you brought up exercise because that's another thing. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize the importance of, of physical fitness, of eating well, of, of taking care of your body because when I feel good, I play good. There's a huge connection between those two. So. If I'm tired or if I haven't worked out in a couple of days and then I go play a show, I'm a little sluggish because I feel sluggish. I haven't done anything, right? Um, so when I was on tour back in March, uh, the whole band was making fun of me because <laughs> like, you know, uh, we would do sound check and then we would have a few hours uh, to kill because as, as the headliner, you get there around two or three, you sound check and then... Uh, from then on until Doors, which is like usually seven, that's when all the other bands do their line checks and, and, and all that stuff. So we would leave, go to the hotel and do whatever. And I always went to the gym. Always went to the gym, hit the treadmill. If there wasn't one, I'd just do push-ups in the room or sit-ups or whatever. Like if I did something with my body for like 20 or 30 minutes, then it was gonna be a good show that night. And if I didn't, because there were times where it was just too crazy and I just you know did whatever, those were our worst shows, <laughs> you know? So I think that definitely has something to do with it, not just age, but if you're not using your body, um, it, it's all connected, right? Your fingers aren't some disconnected entity from the rest of your body, right? If you're overweight, if you're not exercising, if you're not eating well, if you're not feeling good, 
your fingers are feeling that way too. It's not just, you know, not just your chest or your brain or, or your lungs or whatever. It's all of it, right? So I would definitely say, yeah, if, um, especially if you're getting older, I think it becomes even more important to take care of your meat soup because it don't take care of itself. Um, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's keep going here. Um, Victor says, slap triplets are so sketchy. Do you know an exercise for it? Can you tell me what you mean by sketchy? I, I'm assuming you mean that it's 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 hard to do. Um, Victor, if you can help me out, that'd be great. Uh, I can't tell. Are we caught up? Yes. Ben says, hydration and warming your muscles up is important from a thrash metal basis. Yes, I believe you. Um, what else we got here? When playing eighth notes with alternating plucking, this is from Christoph, by the way. Uh, plucking the two fingers sound different. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, coming back to your question. Do their different length. Um, how to improve this? Honestly, I don't think it's the length. I think it's the size of the pad of the finger. Like, I don't know. Can you see? Will this show up? Is it in focus? Which way am I going? Okay, there it is. Like, the size of this finger is different from this one. I don't know if the length necessarily has anything to do with it. And very well, good. I'm not a doctor. Um, so yeah, how to get them sounding consistent, even though they're gonna sound different. I think doing exactly what I'm doing right now, uh, especially I had to do this recently, a couple of years ago, I switched to playing with three fingers. And you can hear how da, 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 like they're, they're not all even. I'm much more consistent with just two fingers because that's how I played for like my whole entire life. So I am working on that. And, and how do you practice it? <laughs> exactly what you just saw me do it, right? Go nice and slow, pick a note. And I just stopped because that's how long it took me to get them to sound consistent. One of them had a had a smack to it, another one kind of buzzed or got cut off, and I want them all to sound the same, so I'm just gonna sit there. That third one, that wasn't it. All right, now I'm starting to get them consistent. So literally I'll just sit there and play, and when I got one note, So I mean, literally just start hitting your scales, hitting your arpeggios, and go slow because I'm not trying to get speed. I'm working on consistency. And I think that's another thing that a lot of people struggle with when they're practicing is they're trying to work on consistency and speed and articulation and learning a new song, and learning a new technique. And they're like doing all these things at once. You know, how about just two? Try two things at once, <laughs> right? Or, or like just one, just working on consistency or just working on speed. Kind of take them in, in, in smaller pieces and then start putting them together. You might have better luck that way. Uh, let's keep going here. Sir Blue, welcome. Yes, <laughs> you made it. Sean from Cape Town. Hey, welcome, man. Uh, how, what time do I got here? Okay, I've got enough time to answer like Three more questions, because uh, I got to get going. I've actually got a gig tonight. So I've got to start preparing. Just got back from the polling booth. Oh, you voted. Is it voting day? I'm actually not even sure. <laughs> it might be. That's how American I am. Hello from the Philippines. Paolo, welcome. Um, I only play with one finger. Okay, Nathan says, I often play with one finger if I need to sound super consistent. And to be honest, I'll do the same exact thing. It depends on the speed. If it's like a boom, 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 boom. I mean, yeah, there's just use the one finger. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but obviously, if it's a but, well, I, I don't have that option. Unless you want to try like tremolo picking, which isn't really something I do. And that's where you're going down and then back up. If I 
I pull up the treble. I, like I said, that's not that's not really my sound. You'll see Brian Beller doing that a lot. It's a really cool thrash technique, I guess. But yeah, just kind of going using one finger to go really, really fast. Faster than I can actually go with two fingers, probably. Uh, let's see, we got two more questions. Jamie, have you ever slash will you ever do a video on Upright? You know what? Uh, good question. I was actually hanging with uh, Chance Onity, which is another dude that I've had on the Basis podcast recently. And um, and he and I are talking about actually collaborating and, and doing a series, not just on double bass, but like double bass for electric bass guitarists. Um, he's an NS, Ned Steinberg artist. And so we're trying to get this thing between me, Chance, and, uh, and NS Designs to kind of like create a little like beginner's curriculum for like someone like myself. This was me about 10 years ago who plays electric bass. God, 10 years ago? No, like 15 years ago. Someone who plays electric bass and is like, hey, I want to get into the world of upright. What does that mean? What do I need? How, what, what are the, you know, how do I do it? How's the techniques different? So uh, we're actually working on something like that. I don't know that it's going to be ready probably be a couple more months. Um, we're in the beginning stages of talking about what it looks like and negotiating and all that. Um, but yes, the short answer is yes. You're just going to have to wait a little teeny bit. And before I get to the last question, guys, do me a favor. If you haven't done this yet, I'm assuming you're all subscribed, but make sure you hit this notification button right here. That's going to make sure that you get notified each time I go live and every single time that a new video goes up. Which, hey, if you haven't done, please give this video a thumbs up. Look, there's instructions right below you. <laughs> but that helps with my rankings and uh, yeah, helps it so that when I uh, when I do go live, more people will, will, will get notified. Okay, hold on. There's a couple questions here and I want to get to them all. GHS says that would be incredibly valuable. Yeah, because Chance is a ridiculous double bassist. Well, he's an amazing bass guitarist also. Um, but he's a real double bass player. Like, I mean, I, I haven't played double bass I play it twice a year, once at Easter, once at Christmas, and I like haven't touched it since uh, since college, which was too long ago. So I barely call myself a double bassist at this point. So that's why I wanted to get Chance on on board. Oh, okay, okay. Victor was acting asking about the triplets. Let's go to that one. Do I prefer a 112, 212, or four tens? I like 12 inches, good cabinets, because it sounds like a 15 and a 10. So this right here, th th this is two 12s. Excellent. Uh, okay, Victor says, I'm doing some chops like double thump and slap at the end about the triplets. Okay, sometimes uh, adding ghost notes, but my imagination is not going further. Hmm. Um, well, here's something that I like to do with triplets. Uh, I'll do a video on this pretty soon. Um, let me see. Is this a good angle? Okay, so, so this is a cool trick that you can do with triplets. And the technique is pretty much uh, identical to Victor's open hammer pluck. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's where you hit an open string, you hit a hammered note, and then you pluck. And if you play those three notes, you're playing a triplet. One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, And you'll have to forgive me if I'm a bit rusty. I don't slap too often. So that's the technique, open hammer pluck. So check this out. I've kind of evolved that into playing uh, triads. Um, if I do it in slow motion, it looks like this. Sorry, I had to take a second because I forgot how it goes. <laughs> but so basically I'm playing an A major triad. And I'm playing, uh, let's see, I'm doing an open here, I'm hammering the A, and then I'm plucking uh, the C sharp. So I'm playing the fifth, the root, and the third. And then um, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna op uh, play an open string, and then hammer on, and pull off between the C sharp and the E. So basically, it's an A major triad. And it's just open hammer, pluck, and then a thump, with two hammer-ons, right? So I'm outlining an A major triad. Uh, maybe with some bitter up here. Right, so that's in root position. Then all I'll do is I'll take that 
concept, that technique, and I'll move it up the neck. So if I could do it from A, right, that was starting like down here. I could do the same from C sharp. And if I do a, a diminished uh, arpeggio, I'm playing C sharp, E, and G, which is the third, the fifth, and the seventh of A. And then from the fifth, um, I'm just hitting the open E, or sorry, the open A, and then hammering onto E. I'm plucking the octave and kind of doing the same, um, you know, hammer on trick. And then we're back to the top. So I know that's a lot to kind of take in right now because <laughs> it's a pretty advanced concept. But you, you can see how it's very sim it's very similar, similar, simple. That's the word I meant to say. It's very simple in terms of the context. Right? It's it's easy to articulate, but when you play it fast. Uh, uh, how's it go? Mm. Okay, so what would I have used? Ah. I got to go home and practice it. <laughs> you just told me, you just show me exactly what I'm going to work on this week. So, so that's something that I like to do uh, with triplets. I don't know if that helps you at all, uh, but, but but it's a cool trick to get outside of just you know slapping octaves or whatever is actually putting it in context with something like like a triad um, and, and like I said it, it's it's pretty cool when you can do it really fast and you're just moving up all the different versions so you're pretty much playing the same thing over and over and over again so hey guys thank you so very much for tuning in thanks to Enki for making this live stream possible go check them out at Enki USA and I'm going to say also they make very good t-shirts these are very lightweight, <laughs> very stretchy, and they, they actually they feel really soft. So I like that too. Hey, before I go, I'm going to give some stuff away. So the first thing is I'm going to give away a month, one month membership at thebasis.net. Uh, if you don't know what thebasis.net is, it's kind of like my Netflix of, of bass. So there's bass lessons. There's something called the basis curriculum that takes you from like, I've never even heard of a bass, all the way up to like, I know every note, I can play every scale, every arpeggio, I can read music ear training, um, like the whole entire thing. And then there's extracurricular lessons on, I'll be filming that pretty soon because <laughs> that was, I haven't done that in a while. Um, it, so there's uh, extracurricular stuff on slap and tap and a whole bunch of other things. So here's the question I'm going to ask. If you get this right, you get a one month membership at thebasis.net. And the question is this, hold on, where is it? Ah, I can't actually say this question because Ben gave it away. So I'm going to ask a different question. All right. So on the podcast that I did with Bubby Lewis, um, besides sharing the same last name, there's something else that we have in common. We both eat the same kind of diet. What is it? We were actually talking about this uh, yeah, on the podcast. He was telling me about what he eats, and I'm like, that sounds a lot like what I eat. How do you know so much about whatever? And then it turns out we've been eating the same way. I've been doing this for about two years. He's been doing it for like 11 or 12. And that's how he dropped. I don't know if you know this, but he, he dropped about 220 pounds or something like that back in like 2009 or 10 or something like that. And he did it by eating this very specific diet, which I started eating about two years ago. So the name of that diet is what? David, you got it, bro. Actually, I didn't look to see if anyone got it before you. <laughs> Buss, that is not vegan. I'm not a vegan, no. Uh, Matt, it's not Mediterranean, but David, the answer is keto. Ketogenic is uh, like the full term of the diet. Um, if, you don't, if you don't know what that is, it's a high fat diet. So I don't eat any carb, I say I, Bubby is also in this category. We don't eat carbohydrates, don't eat breads, don't eat much fruit. It's, uh, it's similar to paleo, Matt. It's similar to paleo, but um, like I don't even eat sweet potato or regular potatoes or just anything that's a carbohydrate, it's out. But I eat lots of fat. I eat about 200 grams of fat every single day. So like half a stick of butter, uh, lots of olive oil, lots of nuts, lots of seeds. Um, and that's how we got to talking about it because we were talking about nuts and he's like, oh yeah, I like cashews. I'm like, oh yeah, but cashews are gourds, not really nuts. And he's like, yeah, I know because macadamias are much better. Like, wait, how do you know so much about nuts? <laughs> like, you must be, you must be in, very similar to I, the way I do. Anyways, so David, here's what I want you to do. 
send me an email to jamie at thebassist.net or, uh, you know, message me here on YouTube or whatever, or any of the social medias. I mean, I don't know, whatever you got. And, um, uh, and we'll get that hooked up. Here we go. Question number two is what? I've got to look at question number two. All right. On Mother's Day, I posted a picture on my Instagram page. What was it? And if you've been following me for a while, then you know that I actually probably post this same picture every Mother's Day. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's, it's how I roll. So there's a photo that I posted on Mother's Day. What was it? And if you don't know what it is, all you have to do is go to my Instagram account. <laughs> you can just take a look and see what it is. And while you're doing that, I'll read from Victor. Are you going to upload the stream? If you're talking about this video, yes, it goes live. I mean, we're live right now, but it goes into my uh, like my video queue almost immediately. Uh, it might have to take like an hour to process or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so you, you'll be able to check this out later. I'll practice those major seven licks. <laughs> yeah, actually, they were dominant sevens because I was playing a, a G natural. But if you wanted to make it major seven, then uh, yeah, you, you would just raise it up. Threadmill? Rajesh says Threadmill? No, sorry. I don't know what that is. All right. The Mother's Day question is not getting any interaction, so I might have to ask you another one. Anybody? Going once. <laughs> Matt, you and your wife packing up? No, that's not what I posted on Mother's Day. I'll give you the answer. Um, every Mother's Day, I post one of two photos. Um, it's either Norman Bates like the last scene of Psycho as the camera's like zooming in on him and, uh, um, you know, he's, he's, he's looking crazy because, you know, his mother. <laughs> it, was, it was one of those things. Or I'll post uh, a picture of Jason Voorhees hugging his mom from the, the set of like Friday the 13th or something like that. Because I'm way into horror movies. That's my thing. I love horror movies. And so Psycho, Friday the 13th, both of those center around moms. I have a hard time with Father's Day because I don't know of a uh, of a horror movie that that uh, or I just can't think of one off the top of my head where it's like the dad was the reason or the killer or or whatever. I don't know. I'll have to do some more thought into it. Okay, so backup question. Backup question. Oh, okay. Uh, this morning on my Instagram story, I posted a video of me drinking coffee out of what kind of mug? It wasn't this one. First person to get it. Gets a free private lesson with yours truly. We'll do an hour or 30 minutes or, you know, whatever you got time for. So, who knows what kind of coffee mug I used? Nathan, you got it, bro. The answer is unicorn. My wife, for some reason, got unicorn coffee mugs. And she loves unicorns, like a lot of girls do. And some dudes. But anyways, yeah. So, uh, Nathan, um, send me a message, jamie at thebassist.net, or hit me up on socials or anything like that, and we'll work out a time to to link together, and, and we'll, do, we'll do a podcast. Okay, we got one more question, but in the meantime, just a reminder, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that, and then click on the notification icon, that little bell. Está muy importante. And this right here is for a free item at The Basis Store. So, a t-shirt, um, a jam track, anything that you want, it's over there. And the question is this, who appeared on episode number 55 of the Basis Podcast? Which was only two episodes ago, because 57 just went up. So, episode 55, who was my guest? Let's take a listen, does anyone know? It's not Starbucks, it's not smiley face sunglasses. Episode 55. All you got to do is just open up your podcasting app, take a look at the Basis Podcast, tell me who the guest was. And hey, while you're at it, you might as well hit subscribe too. It was not our, our Adriana. No, it was not Ariana. She was, I think, 54. I think she came right before it. Episode number 55. It wasn't Bubby Lewis. Matt, you got it. Tim Dove. Tim Dove from Ernie Ball. He's a rad dude. That was honestly, that was another great podcast. He and I are very similar in age, had a very similar upbringing, like a lot of the same music. So that was another great conversation because, um, yeah, like I said, we, uh, we're so similar. <laughs> Israel, it's me. Hey, if you want to be on the show, 
send me an email. We'll make it happen. Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you so very much for, for, for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for, for, for showing up. And uh, if you like what I do, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. If you really like what I do, come hang out with me at thebasis.net. Uh, there'll be a button down here where you can go check that out. Um, and again, check out The Basis Podcast. It's one of my favorite things that I do. New episodes go live each and every week. Um, as far as live streaming, I don't know the next time I'm going to be back. It might be about three or four weeks from now because uh, I'm traveling a bit. I'm heading to Germany. Um, I'm going to uh, another trip to Vegas. We're playing in Milwaukee. We've got another show in Nevada. So I'm kind of all over the place. I'll do my best uh, to do another one of these. Or um, Oh, you know, I need to say this too. There's a new series that I'm starting here uh, at my YouTube channel called The Bassist's Guide to Recording. It's, it's going to be really awesome. I'm partnering, partnering with Presonus to make it happen. So um, I'm going to take you basically from like all I have is a computer. I'm going to show you what things you need to buy. I'm going to show you how to use it and get you all set up so that you can start recording your own music, making your own YouTube videos and, and this kind of stuff, how to mix and edit. It's going to be really, really cool. So um, that's coming up in the future. That'll be one of the next uh, series that, that, that's coming out here at thebasis.net. So thanks again so much for, for stopping by, and I'll see you again next time here at thebasis.net. Audio